uh, basic nucleation model, also referred as th three equation model, and uh, it is also known as ISPCMR model. So we will first of all we will look at very simple. Uh, case of that model without rational expectations in order to to, uh, to be able to see to draw the dynamics of the model just on the graph so first of all let's discuss what this model uh, consists of first of all uh, as any model uh, as any macroeconomic model uh, the first main and very important part of uh, ISPCMR model is the demand side of the economy. So, or, which is described by IS curve, or investment savings curve. Uh, as it is known from the very basic Keynesian uh, theory, uh, the uh, equilibrium on goods market holds when aggregate output equals to consumption, aggregate personal consumption, plus private investments, plus government purchases, and also plus net exports. Unfortunately, the ISPCMR model is the model of closed economy. Therefore, we will not discuss how the net exports, the net exports uh, uh, influence influences the economy. Therefore, we just will subtract that rival, whether uh, even though it is very important, but anyway, it is the, uh, we, will, we will look at the closed economy case. Uh, so this is the condition of uh, equilibrium at goods market, uh, which states that the expected aggregate expenditures of uh, every economic agents, private uh, private agents, firms. Uh, households and also government must be equal to the real and actual output. Uh, uh, anyway, uh, it is also known as the main macroeconomic identity. Uh, it, it must hold uh, uh, every time, uh, and uh, we will also assume that goods market in our model also is also uh, is always in equilibrium. Uh, then we will specify the IS curve analytically by in very simple uh, in very simple way. We will say that aggregate output in time t equals some autonomous component, let's call it A minus parameter B multiplied by R T minus one. R is the real interest rate and the reason why output depends negatively on interest rate. On interest rate it is quite natural. Uh, we can imagine several examples why it is so. The first one is that uh, the real interest rate is uh, the cost of borrowing for firms that decides uh, how much investments to implement each period. Uh, therefore, uh, when the price of rental capital goes up, then the demand for this uh, capital must go, must go down, uh, causing the investments, the aggregate investments to decline and therefore causing the aggregate, uh, the, the aggregate demand and finally output also to decline. Uh, another reason is, uh, can, be, uh, can come from, from uh, uh, the Tobin skew theory, yes, which states that uh, then uh, when interest rates are high, then the market value of the firm is low, uh, causing the investments also to decline and the aggregate output also to decline in the same way. Uh, another important, second important thing with this equation is that is timing. We assume that aggregate output does not react on uh, some changes in real interest rate contemporaneously. Uh, actually, it's, it's also quite natural because uh, who, uh, who controls uh, the real interest rate is the central bank. And through implementing monetary policy, setting interest rates, 
uh, the central bank can affect the economy only with uh, some delay in time. Therefore, there is there, uh, there is some lag in uh, in uh, the in the in the final results of the uh, if, of 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 how the monetary of of when monetary policy finally affects uh, the aggregate output. And uh, in this simple example, we assume that that delay uh, is equal to the one time period or to one lag. So just uh, let's also use graph. If we will define the horizontal axis as Y, or the output and the vertical axis as R, real interest rate, then this simple li linear relationship between uh, output and real uh, interest rates will be uh, will look something like straight line with negative slope, and this is exactly the IS curve for investment savings curve, which defines the aggregate demand in our economy. So the second very important part is the uh, supply side of the economy. Uh, and in our case, the aggregate supply uh, is defined by the Phillips curve. Uh, uh, usually in uh, in new, uh, in UK nation models, uh, we suppose rational expectations that all agents have, have rational ex expectations uh, and moreover rational expectations about inflation. But in very basic case, uh, we will not assume that. And on, uh, on the other hand, uh, we will uh, assume that, uh, that ex inflation expectations are actually naive. Therefore, we will define the Phillips curve analytically, analytically in the following way. We will say that current the inflation in current period depends on inflation expectations in current period plus plus the difference between actual output and so-called natural natural output or output under flexible prices or targeted level of output that, that we will define as uh, y over line, and the difference in Phillips curve is weighted by the uh, coefficient, let's call it alpha. And finally, we will specify inflation expectations. For simplicity, we will assume that inflation expectations uh, are formed in a very naive way. In other words, we will say that inflation expectations in each period equals to the actual inflation in the last period. So that's the Phillips curve or uh, the supply side of the economy. And also, let's draw it in on the horizontal axis. We'll have y on the vertical axis. We'll have phi inflation. And uh, as it can be seen in this space, the Phillips curve is just a straight line with uh, with positive slope. This is the Phillips curve. Uh, and, our, and finally, our goal is to set the behavior of the uh, uh, economic authority in that model. We'll assume that uh, uh, the main authority in our economy that uh, tends to stabilize output and inflation is the central bank. Therefore, we, will, we have to, uh, to determine the exact behavior of the central bank and the result of this of this determination will be exactly the so-called MR curve or monetary rule curve uh, where does it come from uh, let's say that our central bank is uh, is rational agent uh, who uh, has uh, two aims the first aim is to stabilize the volatility or stabilize the output around its uh, natural or flexi, flexi price level. And the second is to stabilize the inflation under or around 
uh, some targeted level, which is uh, uh, very natural uh, nowadays due to the popularity of inflation targeting regime. And therefore, we will, first of all, we'll define the loss function of the central bank. We'll say that loss function equals, first of all, the quadratic deviation of output from its natural or flexi price level. Uh, that's y t minus y over line squared plus the same quadratic deviation of inflation uh, from its targeted level by star. What's quadratic? quadratic. And we will say that uh, 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 the central bank weights the deviation of inflation with coefficient, with exogenous coefficient beta. Uh, so, yes, that's the loss function of the central bank. Uh, and uh, what will uh, it do? It will, tr it, it will try to minimize uh, his, uh, its losses uh, with, with respect to uh, some constraint. So, what will uh, uh, central bank will minimize this function? Subject to some constraint that comes from uh, the economy. What is this constraint? Actually, this constraint is exactly the Phillips curve. Phillips curve. Why? Because Phillips curve shows uh, each possible combinations, combinations of output and inflation uh, for given level of inflation expectations. Uh, therefore, in the economy, actually, uh, there, uh, there, are, there is a, 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 number, a number of different Phillips curves with positive slope, but every uh, but uh, for uh, different levels of inflation expectations. So, uh, and actually, uh, the, each Phillips curve uh, behaves as a constraint for the central bank because uh, each time he uh, can achieve only a particular number of combinations of output and inflation with uh, respect to a given level of inflation expectations, as I said. So therefore, our central bank will minimize its loss function with respect to Phillips curve. In other words, to state it like that. The result of, these, of this optimization problem actually will be the exact exactly the MR curve, or monetary rule curve. If we will minimize this function, write down the first order condition, we will receive the following expression. Yt minus y over line equals to minus alpha multiplied by beta multiplied by pi t minus pi tau. This is exactly the expression for monetary rule curve. Uh, and in space of inflation output, it is you can easily verify that that this is the straight line with negative slope due to this minus. Of course, uh, by assumption we assume that uh, all coefficients beta, alpha, or a and b in the IS curve uh, are positive. So therefore, monetary rule just like this. So this, this was the analytical uh, way of uh, deriving the MR curve. Uh, we can also derive it graphically. Uh, to do this, let's uh, think about the indifference curves of the central bank if uh, it has the following loss function. Uh, the loss function is quadratic, and therefore it is very easy to understand uh, when the central bank has the minimum possible level of uh, its losses. Of course, it, it, it will be the case when output equals to its natural level and the inflation equals to uh, the targeted level. Therefore, if output equals y over line and inflation equals pi star, This will be the most desired 
uh, desired point or state of the economy that central bank tries to achieve by implementing monetary policy. And this point also is known as bliss point. Uh, uh, in, ca uh, in cases when uh, the economy uh, uh, is not in that state, in the bliss point, then uh, the indifference curves due to the, to the quadratic form of the loss function of the central bank will look uh, like, like circles. Of course, under assumption that beta equals one. If it is true, then indifference curve of the central bank will look like that. And of course, the uh, utility of the central bank let's call it utility, rises with that direction. The problem is that uh, the, uh, this point of uh, pi star and y over line cannot always be achieved, can always be achieved, because uh, why, why is it so? It can be achieved only in case when Phillips curve uh, goes through this point. And that, will, and that will be the Phillips curve when inflation expectations equals pi star. Only in that case, this point will be achievable for the central bank. But it is not true in other cases. Let's assume that inflation expectations are higher than the pi star then the Phillips curve will lie above uh, the red one. That's, say, for example, something like that. When pi e equals, let's say, pi 1. If it is true, then the best point for the central bank will be the point which, uh, which is tangent uh, which is tangent to the uh, to the specific indifference curve. Uh, in this particular case, that point will will be like that. The same is true for any other level of inflation expectations. If we will draw Phillips curve like this, let's call it pi PC two, like that PC three, then we can. We can, uh, we can uh, write each each uh, best point that the central bank will choose under different levels of inflation expectations. And if we will, uh, if we will, uh, uh, will unite all these points in one straight line, we will receive exactly the monetary rule curve or MR curve which is, in that case, is derived uh, graphically. Uh, so another very important point to say is to understand how exactly the central bank defines, implements monetary policy. So far, we didn't say anything about the, the interest rate. Actually, the central bank sets the interest rate for any uh, desirable uh, level of output. Just for example, let's say, just on this graph, that uh, this is the equilibrium, or not equilibrium, this is the bliss point, let's say, of y star and y over line. But what if the economy, what if infl inflation expectations are higher? Then the point that the central bank will try to achieve lies here with higher inflation than the pi star and with lower uh, with lower level of output. If it is the case that uh, uh, the central bank, that due to some reasons, try to achieve, uh, for example, due to some shocks. In the economy, we'll, we'll try to achieve that point. Then, 
it, it sees which output he want, it wants to achieve. And for each level of output, uh, central bank can define the level of real interest rate that it will set in order to achieve the specific level of output. This is how the central bank in that model implements the monetary policy. And the final thing that I'd like to say in this introduction is the importance of the parameter, of the, of the value of parameter beta. beta. Why? Because uh, beta in that uh, example, and not just in that example, but in the whole model, uh, stands for the level of conservat of uh, or level of conservatives of central banks conservatives. In other words, uh, with higher betas, central bank will uh, uh, will uh, will be concerned with with inflation more than with uh, uh, output. Therefore. Uh, with the betas more than one, uh, the central bank will uh, will be ready to uh, will be ready to uh, to see in the economy to to have higher volatility of the output uh, in order to uh, remain the inflation stable around the targeted level. And uh, uh, on the other hand, with betas less than one, uh, the central bank will uh, will be ready to uh, will be ready to uh, have higher inflation volatility uh, in order to uh, to achieve lower volatility uh, the of the output and remain it around the uh, targeted or the natural level. Therefore, the specific value of beta is very important for the optimal behavior of the central bank and uh, for the flexibility of the inflation targeting regime.